What is power? The subject of power in the socio-political sense is quite a debated one. However, for brevity's sake, we will use the Merriam-Webster definitions. According to the dictionary, power, in the social and political context, is the possession of control, authority, or influence over others. Power can be coercive or it can diffuse through institutional means. The question of who should wield political power is a question as old as civilization itself. In the modern day, one of the most accepted systems of government in many parts of the world is democracy. However, defining democracy is not as easy as it sounds. One often used definition is rule by the people. However, who are considered the people and how much power should they wield has long been contested in the world's governments and political discourses. A lot of variation exists among today's democratic governments and ideals. However, there can roughly be a divide between two major forms of democracy which give different answers for how much power the people should hold. Those are direct and indirect democracy. Direct democracy is a system of government where the citizens hold political power and are directly involved in governance. It usually comes in the form of popular assemblies where active citizens debate and decide on laws, rules and regulations. One of the most well-known examples of direct democracy in the Western world is ancient Athens. Starting with Solon's reforms in 594 BCE, ancient Athens embarked on a centuries-long system of self-governance. While the democratic system in Athens was not completely direct, as representatives did exist who had special responsibilities, the political decision-making ultimately lay in the hands of the citizens, who exercised their power in the Ecclesia, a popular assembly comprising of around 6,000 citizens at any given moment. However, as some of you may guess, political representation was limited to citizens only, particularly male Athenian citizens over 20 who made up around 10 to 20 percent of the total inhabitants. For reference, some estimates put the number of slaves at around 100,000 in Attica, which was more than the number of eligible citizens. An example of modern direct democracy in action is in Switzerland. The Swiss government itself is considered a semi-direct democracy where it is representative first but has strong instruments of direct representation in place. In two Swiss cantons, Appenzell Inner Hoden and Glarus, I definitely butchered those names, the institutions which had the affairs in both cantons is the Landsgemeinde, or the Cantonal Assembly. How it works is that the assembly votes on a series of ballot questions, which are voted on either by raising hands or voter cards depending on the canton. In Glarus, the citizens are able to propose amendments to existing laws or introduce new ones, while deliberation is more limited in Appenzell Inner Hoden, by contrast. Indirect democracy functions by having the citizens elect representatives who hold the levers of political power. This comes in numerous different forms, but nearly all representative democracies have power split between multiple institutions, and have a system of checks and balances, which checks on and balances out the power of each institution. The overwhelming majority of democratic countries followed the representative or indirect democratic way, covering all the forms of indirect democracy and their histories lie far beyond the scope of this video. However, I will cover one of the most well-known examples of representative democracy in the world, the United States government. The United States government is separated into three branches, the executive branch, legislative branch, and the judiciary. All three branches are separated by law and constitutionally limited through a series of checks and balances. The executive branch carries out and ensures that the laws of the United States are obeyed. The executive branch includes the president, who is the country's head of state, alongside the vice president and the cabinet, which is appointed by the president. The president can also appoint the Supreme Court judges, propose legislation, veto legislation, and sign executive orders. However, each action has a constitutionally written balance. Congress must approve Supreme Court appointments, pass legislation, and can override the president's veto. Similarly, the Supreme Court can rule a law or an executive order as unconstitutional. The legislative branch, or Congress, is composed of the House of Representatives and the Senate. It has the power to enact laws, declare wars, and conduct special investigations, among other things. The Senate is an institution made up of 100 senators, two from each 50 states, and can serve an unlimited amount of six-year terms. The House of Representatives is made up of 435 representatives who are elected into office. As previously mentioned, the power of Congress is checked by the President's veto and judicial rulings. The judiciary is where all the federal courts lay, which interpret the laws passed by Congress. At the top is the Supreme Court, which has final say over all cases appealed to by lower courts. There are currently nine members in the Supreme Court. 
the Chief Justice and his eight associate judges, which are all appointed by the executive branch. Six of the eight judges have to decide on the case, while in the event of a tie, the decision of the lower court stands. Below the Supreme Court lie 13 U.S. District Courts of Appeals, which hear cases appealed to them by 94 regional U.S. District Courts, which handle most federal cases. As most of you can probably guess, the United States federal government is in fact not the only form of indirect democracy in existence, with there being much variation in how the governments are structured. However, the American government provides an essential glimpse into how indirect democratic forms of governments are structured. Separation of powers and a system of checks and balances are essential for any representative democracy to function. Within political discourse, there is a debate on whether direct or indirect democracy is a preferable system of governance. They ask questions on whether direct democratic forms of government, where the citizens are directly engaged in politics, are preferable to electing representatives who hold the levers of power, or if the world has become too global, complex, large, and interconnected for power to be held directly by the people. Therefore, electing representatives who can represent the opinions of a segment of the population is preferable, according to this argument. This debate could be a subject to cover in the future, but for now I encourage you all to do your research and come to your own conclusions. I hope this video has provided you with a basic overview of the two main forms of democracy that exist in the world. This was a bit of an experiment in a new form of content. One topic I would like to cover in the future are the various rises and falls of Polish democracy throughout its history, although that is far from guaranteed. Feel free to leave ideas for any future videos. Also, feel free to criticize this video in the comments. If you want to see more of this, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you soon.